On our farm, we breed, raise, and show creme d'argent meat rabbits. In order to preserve quality in the breed, I tend to cull my herd pretty heavily against the standards. This means that I often have rabbit meat in the freezer. Rabbit meat is very similar to chicken and can be used in its place in most cases. Hey guys, welcome back to Tealstone Homestead. Today we are going to be making rabbit pot pie. This is a classic comfort food, and I feel like if you are just starting out butchering your rabbits and you're looking for recipes, this is one of the first ones that I would try. Overall, it's pretty easy to make. I make my own pie crust. You don't necessarily have to do that if you don't want to, but I am going to show you how I do that in this video. I feel like there is nothing quite like homemade pie crust. So I would definitely recommend giving it a try if you have never made it before. It's not actually that hard, and I'm gonna show you a couple of hacks that I do. And to be totally honest with you guys, I don't know if I make it properly, but it is very, good when I do make it. So that's all that really matters to me. It's flaky, it tastes amazing, and I just really enjoy it. So I'm going to show you how I make it. So the first thing that I do when I am getting ready to make a pie crust is I have to cube up my butter. So I'm taking two sticks of butter here and I am cubing them up into little small pieces. Usually I cut the butter long ways and then I cut it into matchsticks and then I kind of chop it. And it does need to be cold when you do this, otherwise you're going to have a buttery mess on your hands. After you get it all chopped up, and it's looking a little bit like this, you're gonna pop it in the freezer and you're gonna leave it in there for between half an hour to an hour. Once your butter is all chilled, you're gonna take a mixing bowl and you're going to whisk together two and a half cups of flour, two teaspoons of sugar, and one teaspoon of salt. You're gonna give it a good whisk and then from the bowl, we're going to transfer it into a food processor or this is like a ninja blender. And this has always worked really well for me for making pie crusts and biscuits and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put our mixture in, all of our flour mixture in the food processor or blender. And then our butter is nice and chilled, so we're going to get all of the butter in there as well. This part you want to work kind of fast because you want your butter to be super cold when you process this all up. I like to use this blender in particular. It's got this little spout on the front here. Um, and this allows me to pour cold water into the mix as it's mixing. And so we're gonna do about half a cup of cold water. It's gotta be very cold water. And as it's blending up, we just wanna put the water in here and just until the dough starts coming together. We don't wanna over blend it. it a couple of times so that the butter all gets incorporated into the flour mixture and now we're going to blend it as we pour some very cold water into the mix. And that's about where I want it. So on a floured work service you're going to get your dough all out of your food processor or your blender. And as you can see, mine needs a little bit more water to incorporate. It's a little bit too dry still. So I'm gonna do this by hand and I'm just gonna add a little bit of water just until it comes together. And also if your dough is too wet, you can always add a little bit more flour and help it that way as well. So here's where you can do one of two things. We have mini cast irons that we like to use. So Jameson and I have our own single serve pot pies. So I'm going to divide my dough here into four, but if you are just going to make one big pot pie that your whole family can dive into, then you would just divide it into two if you're gonna be using just one pie dish. But like I said, I'm gonna divide mine into four here because Jameson and I love using our little mini cast irons. So so I'm going to be making two separate mini pies in this video. You're going to smash it down into little discs. I like to work with mine just a little bit until it looks kind of like this. And then once you get all of them looking like that, I'm actually going to reuse the parchment paper that I had my frozen butter on. So I'm going to put that on a plate. 
And then I'm gonna lay out my little discs on the plate. And I know that they don't look perfect. That's fine. My food is more of a rustic feel anyway. And now I'm gonna cover the pastries with some plastic wrap. And now I'm gonna put these in the fridge for about two hours before we start working with them. Once your dough is chilled, you're gonna preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. You're gonna take one of your dough discs out, two of them if you are making many cast iron pot pies like Jameson and I are, and you are going to flour your work surface and you're going to roll it out with a rolling pin. And this is the part where you kind of have to guesstimate how big to roll it out. You don't want your dough to be too thick because it will puff up in the oven, but you don't want it to be too thin either because you don't want to tear it as you're working with it. From there, you're going to fit it in the bottom of whatever baking dish, cast iron, glass, pie pan, whatever you decide to use, you're gonna fit it in the bottom and you're just gonna press in all of the edges so that it's sitting nice and flat in the dish. And we're gonna do something to this pot pie called par baking, where the bottom shell is going to get baked a little bit through before we actually put in our filling and our top pastry and all of that. We're going to par bake the bottom shell first. Something that I find to be helpful when par baking is I take a piece of parchment paper and I am going to fit it in the bottom of my cast iron here on top of the pastry and then I'm going to weigh it down with rice. And this just helps your pie crust to retain its shape without puffing up on the bottom and sometimes if you don't weigh it down the sides can also shrink in and just cause kind of a misshapen pie. So this is just how you can can prevent that from happening and just keep your pie shape looking good. Once you have your pie all weighed down, you're going to pop it in your already preheated oven and you're gonna bake it for around 10 minutes. Once your bottom pie crust has been baking for about 10 minutes, you're gonna take it out of the oven and you are going to take the parchment paper with your weights off of it and then you're gonna prick little holes in it with a fork. And what this will do is it will just help the bottom not to puff up while it's baking. If you don't poke holes in it, you're gonna end up with a huge air bubble on the bottom of your pie. You're gonna pop your pastry back in the oven for two to three more minutes, just enough to cook the bottom of the pie crust without the weights on it. Your pie crust is still warm. Now is the time to take a pair of scissors and clip off all of the overhang on your pie's edges. This overhang is going to make it hard to be able to wrap around our top pastry, so we just wanna clip it to whatever baking dishes edges you have, and that way, when we put the top pastry on, it's easier to tuck it into the sides. You're just gonna set that aside, you can let it cool, and then we are going to start working on the filling, which, if you noticed in this video, I kind of went rogue and have already been working on the filling, but with editing magic, we are going to rewind and I'm gonna show you how I do that. So for the filling, I personally like to have all my ingredients cut up and ready to go before I actually start working on it, just so I don't feel so rushed as I'm trying to make the filling because things are hot and I just, I like to be prepared. So I like to cut all of my things in advance. You are going to need one onion. I prefer sweet or yellow onions and you're just gonna dice that up really nicely. And then you're gonna want two carrots, and I just peel them and then dice them up along the same size as the onion. Three cloves of garlic, and if you watched my white rabbit chili video, you'll know that I love garlic. You can make it more than that, you can make it less than that, but three cloves in the pot pie recipe seems to be the sweet spot for me. One cup of chopped Baby Bella mushrooms. I love these mushrooms. White mushrooms work fine as well, but I do like the Baby Bellas a lot. They bring a little bit more color. I just think that they have kind of a better texture. I don't know, maybe that's just me. And then you're gonna want about one tablespoon of fresh thyme. And I just chop this up really, really finely. And if you wanna set this aside as well, you're gonna want one cup of frozen peas. 
in a large saucepan, you're gonna put three tablespoons of butter. You're gonna let that melt, and once it gets all nice and melty, you're gonna add your onion. And this whole time, you want your heat kind of on a lower setting. I usually have my heat on medium low. And you're just gonna wanna stir the onions around until they're all coated in that butter. Sometimes I like to cover my onions like this if I have it on a really low heat and that just helps it cook a little bit slower. But overall it's going to take about five minutes for your onions to soften and at this time you're going to add your carrots. And you just want to stir those together with your onion and then you're going to add your cut up mushrooms, your fresh thyme, and your garlic. Just stir that all together until it's all nicely, evenly distributed within the pan. And I like to cover it again and let it cook on a lower setting for about five minutes. At this point, I added about two tablespoons more of butter, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, half a teaspoon of onion powder, and half a teaspoon of garlic powder, one cup of frozen green peas. Stir it all together so it's nice and evenly distributed. And you just want to wait at this point until your peas are completely thawed out, which takes about two to three minutes. The next step is you're going to be adding some bone broth. This is rabbit bone broth, and I have a video all about how to make it, but if you don't have bone broth, you can always use chicken stock or chicken broth. My camera is very much out of focus, but I added one fourth cup of flour to the mixture, and the flour is going to help us create a roux and make it nice and creamy. And then you just want to mix in your bone broth or chicken broth in smaller increments so that the mixture gets nice and creamy in between each pour. And once you've used up all of your broth, you're gonna add half a cup of milk And at this point, your veggies should be nice and sauteed, and you should have a nice creamy gravy within your pot. If your mixture looks like this, go ahead and add about two cups of already cooked and shredded rabbit, and stir all of this together just until everything is heated through. Now you're going to want to take out your other dough discs out of the fridge and you're going to want to roll those out. And these are going to be the tops of our homemade pot pies. Add your mixture to each par-baked pie shell. You're going to lay your freshly rolled pastry out on top of your pot pie and then you are going to pinch and fold your pastry underneath the par-baked pastry. Then on your edges, you're going to use a fork and you're just going to make a little pattern on the sides. And this also helps seal the pastries together so when they bake, it will become one nice cohesive pie. And something that's gonna make these look extra pretty is egg wash. And what egg wash is, is it's just one egg mixed with a tablespoon of milk, and you're just going to lightly brush that on top of each of your pot pies. The egg wash is going to make your pastry look really nice and shiny and golden on top as it cooks. And then you just want to gently cut an X pattern in the top of each of your pies, and this is going to help the pastry not blow up on top of the ingredients that are inside, but also it's going to allow steam to escape as it cooks. And then you're just going to place these in the oven and you're going to let them go for about 30 minutes. you guys it's so pretty I just want to put time sprigs on top of it to make it look really pretty look at that it's gorgeous I've let it cool for I don't know around 35 minutes 
and pot pies are like eternally hot um, and that's why because I didn't want to burn myself on camera but I am gonna try it it's really really good and the crust I popped this off just so I could see the inside of it and get some good shots of it this is definitely one of my favorite things to make with rabbit and for me it's like not only the one of the best beginner recipes that you can make but it's also just one of the best recipes that you can make like rabbit pot pie is so good so i hope that you guys enjoyed watching me make this and hopefully it helps you if you are attempting to make it yourself hopefully this recipe and this video helps you out and i am going to go enjoy more of this and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys Thank you.